for that in the line of trace elements down the track. But your primary care, calcium, ability, magnesium, plus trace, amino and grow, which is your nutrition, and maybe carbon. Okay, and in the, so they don't need amino and grow, they start with cow, cow, and mag. Yeah, what? that's your building blocks of your coral. Yep. So yeah. So there's a new reefer or someone that is changing brands. What's the first and easiest thing to do or the easiest products to use from coral essentials? Straight away, you have the primary care, which is calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium, and they have all the trace elements built in. They're, they're done at ratios that we've tested in the coral farm, and yeah. they work. Uh, we can add more stuff to that in the light of trace elements down the track, but your primary care, calcium, alkalinity, magnesium, plus trace, amino and grow, which is in nutrition, and maybe carbon. Okay, and in the, so they don't need amino and grow, they start with, Cow, out and mag. Yeah. What That's the, your building blocks of your coral. Yep. So yeah. And what are the traces in each of those three? Each one of those three has pretty much the complete range of traces that we offer as an individual range or individual elements that are designed for the more advanced reefer. And how many traces altogether in, in just your calcium, acclimating in mag? Oh, it's, <laughs> there's a few. <laughs> there's a, okay. Yeah. But they're all... In those three primary care. Yeah, yeah. So the new reef for changing brands. is about 20 on. In the- okay. So new reef for changing brands and or beginner and or expert. It's just like your daily, like that's it. That's your. Yeah. Just so straight away. I wouldn't want a dosing pump and you're done. Okay. Yeah. All right. So then let's just go through each of the main, the way I look at it, are the, the big categories of the primary care being first and the yeah the number one the easiest everyone should use it yeah that's your staple that's your bread and butter next would be um the amino and grow yeah is that beginner intermediate advanced or fatties all three yeah that's uh, amino and grow are the building blocks of coral tissue so we've got the primary care which is a building blocks of coral skeleton and then we've got the amino and grow which are the building blocks of coral tissue and which covers that skeleton. Tissue is also color. Is that uh, I don't see it, but it's more the flesh side of it. And then we put our colors in. You know, the, how, yeah, the coral will put the colors in itself using those as well, but it's more the actual, the meatier part of it. So skeleton is your uh, primary care. Yep. Now we're on to the tissue, which yep. is amino and grow. Yeah. And how do they work when you dose it? beginner medium advanced doesn't matter give us everything yeah whether you're a, a beginner medium intermediate mm-hmm. or fully advanced the all the only thing that really changes is the dose rate if you've got a really low stock tank you just dose a little bit less if you've got a high stock tank you probably end up dosing a little bit more than the recommended which is realistically not much more anyway can you overdose i mean i'll grow yeah certainly you can yeah um i grow not so much yeah because your corals just suck up vitamins like not so like a lot but amino it's quite concentrated so when the overdosing on that the, you'll notice oh, the very first thing you'll notice you have a green fill on the glass it's an algae and uh, you all this amino yeah the amino side of it yeah so uh, the the dose rate's two drops per hundred liters so it's quite strong combined it um so you don't need to add a lot anyway but uh, yeah, when you do dose, the fir- overdose, the first sign of overdose is a low of light fill on the glass, which is not a problem. You can just wipe it off and then back your dosage off. It's fine. Okay. And obviously amino, you have amino acids. Yep. And grow, what's in grow? That's a vitamin base. So yeah, it was called grow because um, vitamin, it's like the growth of corals. So okay. the, the corals use vitamins to be able to use aminos and they use aminos to grow. So it's a very chain reaction they've got going. And day nine, in between cow out mag, what's the... So amino uptake is best during the photo period. So while your aquarium lights are on. So we usually say to dose amino during the day and grow the vitamin based. We usually say to dose them at night because the corals tend to utilize mm. the aminos by using the vitamins and we had growth period. And when you say dose, is it once or is it throughout the day? 
everything is better dose split up bottom it doesn't really matter if you're dosing in one hit as long as it's there okay if you're depriving your system of it completely that's where we have issues but okay yeah one dose in the morning before you go to work of the inhano and when you get harnessed from work when you're feeding the fish put the grub in done okay and you can use amino grow even if you don't use the coral essentials primary care yeah 100 yeah okay yeah so it's a skeleton tissue which is primary care amino grow yeah what's the third um yeah uh, nutrients and uh, um, what they keep and troll the nutrients uh so uh, carbon is one we can dis- remove dissolved organics and therefore remove waste before it becomes waste. This is the coral essentials carbon. Yeah, yeah, the activated carbon. Yeah, and we've got zeolite as well, which is another sort of thing you could look at for uh, waste reduction and ammonia reduction as well. So, well, one thing I always speak to the guys about at coral essentials is the carbon you use is a very high grade because there's a million carbon yeah. in the market and there's yeah. cheap and there's expensive. Yes, yeah, there a big difference. Like realistically, what there is actually there. There is a quite a big difference in carbons, and uh, when you're looking at what carbon to use and where you get it from, we, there's a lot of testing goes into it. Mm-hmm. I remember the early stages before uh, we had a carbon. We we're going through all the testing for mm-hmm. typically for the farm use. We were buying in one ton bags of carbon to test the product and see if it was consistent and be able to supply a consistent product. But so testing on the coral farm, sustainable reefs and everything, but um, the the variants in carbons, whether they have phosphate, whether they crumble leaching into the tank. Yeah. So they, they wash a lot, some of the processes in carbon manufacture, they wash it with a, um, uh, I think it might be phosphoric acid. I'm pretty sure it is said on the spot there, but yeah. Um, I they wash it and the, the phosphate and phosphorus remains behind for the washing process, which then leaches out of the carbon into your aquarium. So that's one, okay. um, me, uh, one way that you can a different product. There is by ensuring that it doesn't leach and back out and only just absorbs. Yeah. Um, so, so we said, again, I'll keep referring back to that whole timeline. It's skeleton, tissue, and then why did you put nutrients before the next, say, traces or CBE or something? Why is that? Well, you so you don't really want to be focusing on uh, micro trace element dosing, which is all of your chromiums and uh, vanadium and nickel and iron and all of these tiny micro elements. You don't want to be focusing on dosing those if you don't have nutrients like nitrate, phosphate or phosphorus yeah. under control. If those are out of control, you're going to have awful colors anyway. And these other elements are predominantly to affect color. So we want to make sure you've got your nutrient control under under control first, and then we can get you into the fine tuning of your micro trace elements. So if they've done those three steps, primary care, amino grow, and they have good... uh, Yeah, utilizing your primary care of getting uh, your complete calcium magnesium and alkalinity stable at the uptake yep going well and monitored and checked and you've obviously been mean increasing uh well yeah or increasing or stable for quite a while that's fine um because okay. some types of coral don't actually use a lot of it so if you've got uh a tank an aquarium that is primarily soft corals and larger fleshy polyp corals like your hammer corals and scollies and things like that they grow a lot slower than uh, the the sps so yeah. your uptake of these primary three elements or primary three products will be a lot less when you start delving into sps the growth is rapid therefore the skeleton growth is rapid and these elements or these primary care are sucked up a lot a lot faster so we can okay. uh so if you've got these corals that utilize these elements more you're going to experience faster uptake and more uptake on those three okay so after all those pre prior steps have been ticked off so to speak what's next the now it's the nutrient control yeah i mean i grew after primary care what's next and again is this 
beginner, advanced, medium, or just everybody? Yeah, well, I mean, everyone, I think, um, if you want to push the bar and take your reef tank to the next level, then a lot of uh, reefers are getting into ICP testing, and that's where we can uh, use one of the, the ICP services around, and there's be quite a few popping up around, and there's some tried and, trust, tried and tested uh, companies around that have uh, been doing it for a while. So we can utilize that service and we can look at the results of your ICPing test and then we can utilize the individual micro elements.